Well, with the magic of editing, we have jumped from the last section to having our story partially done with video to having all the B-roll in, just because of the fact I really didn't want to bore you with just filling in and filling in. Now that the story's done, as you can see on the timeline, there is one more aspect of this that we really need to do before it would be ready. And that is, we've got to work on our audio levels. Our main audio levels are fine. Our commentator, our sound bites and everything, they're, they're pretty much right where they need to be. But if you listen right here, as it plays... Utah Lake, located in the Wasatch Mountains in Utah, with a surface area of nearly 90... You'll hear how loud the second channel is, the mic coming off the actual camera itself, and it's very distracting. Now, even though this is natural sound and really adds to the fullness of the sound, we don't want it to be overpowering. So we want to be able to work on the audio here. So I'm going to show you two or three different ways that audio can be worked with inside of EDIUS. It's not every way that's possible, but it is some of the basic ways that we can work on it. First off, we're going to look at the audio mixer. To get to the audio mixer, we just bring the mouse over to this icon right here on the timeline, and we bring it up. Now, inside the audio mixer, there's been some changes if you're used to earlier versions of EDIUS, such as it used to be that when the audio mixer was up that the buffer would always just be very, very low and would make it difficult to play back when you were over places that just were taxing the CPUs a bit too much. But now you'll notice that right down here, there's an off button. And so you can use the audio mixer to look at audio levels of all your channels, or all your tracks rather, and have it up permanently as long as that's in the off position and it doesn't do anything to your buffer at all. However, we're looking at the second channel right here, and so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come down to the track 2, and I'm going to select track. Now, what track is going to do is, when I start to pull down, let's, let's say I pull it down, you know, negative 6 dB right here. Or negative 7, rather. Well, I'll bring it up. There you go. That's close enough. Now what will happen is, is as you will see it, uh, hear it play, actually, you'll hear that. Utah Lake, located in see, it's much lower now, but I'm going to bring it down even more to negative 12 because that was just a little bit too loud. And once again, I'm just going to get it close enough here, and let's play it again. Utah Lake, located in the Wasatch... See, now that's much better. I can still hear what's going on in the natural sound, but yet it's not overpowering. It's just kind of accenting what's happening. Now, the only problem we have with the audio mixer and using track is all the natural sound exactly the same. In other words, are they all sitting at the same levels or loudness? And if they're not, then I'm going to have variations sitting inside of that. Because when you get to the next clip, in Utah, with a surface area of nearly 97, it wasn't as loud to begin with, and so I'd have to kind of adjust. Now, inside the audio mixer, I could, if I wanted to, bring this back up to zero. And then I could gang these two together. Now, I've already done that a little bit earlier, but by selecting the same color, you have three different gangs that you can do, and then turning them both to track, you can see that I can do multiple tracks at a time and be able to do my audio levels. I can also go to clip, and then go ahead and turn this one off and ungang them here. But I could go to clip on this one and be able to do each clip individually with the audio mixer if I wanted to also. So with the audio mixer, you have a lot of things that you can do. You can do the master, you can do individual clips, tracks, you can do multiple tracks at the same time. And if you take a look down here, you're going to see that also we have latch, touch, and write. And these are just three different ways that act a tad bit differently from each other and you can kind of play with it and see that allows you to ride the audio levels in real time. So if I have it on latch and I start to play it, makes it the third largest body of fresh water west of the Great Lakes. At its northern I can sit there and just ride the audio levels, and if I open this up, you'll be able to see right down here that now my rubber band has the movements in it from that. Now I'm going to go ahead and control Z out of there for what I just did, and let's just reopen it back up again to where everything's right there. The audio mixer does have a, a lot of power to it, and it will allow you to be able to either ride your audio levels, affect an entire track, or just a clip. The second way of being able to work with these is basically the rubber bands. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close up 1A because of the fact that we're through working on it to make it a little bit easier to see right here. And I'm going to bring my view out a little bit further so we can see it a little bit easier. There we go. 
Now, to turn on the rubber bands, all I have to do is go right underneath where the track name is, to the right of the track name, right underneath the speaker, and when I push on that button, you see it says volume, and now I have my rubber band sitting right here. I can ride these levels now because or work with them very quickly because I can see the waveform on it. So to add a node, if I wanted to do like a nat burst or a natural sound burst right here, I could just left click, bring up that first node pretty loud, and then I can bring down this node and bring down the last, last node to where I can bring it pretty low. And this is what it would sound like. Utah Lake, located in the water. Okay, so it gives it kind of a loud thing in the beginning to get the attention of the individuals watching, and then it goes down lower. When I want to work on the rest of this, however, if I want to work on different tracks, basically by holding down Shift and Alt, I can affect the entire clip very, very quickly. Now, if you'll notice down here in the lower left-hand corner while I'm raising and lowering, you'll see that it shows me exactly the percentage and the dB that I'm lowering it. I can get in here and be able to work with individual clips in that way. And I can add as many notes as I want to be able to lift them up, bring them down, do whatever it is I want to do with it, and you'll see as this plays. With a surface area of nearly 97,000 acres, makes it the third largest body of fresh water. You can see that the audio on that natural sound is going up and down and up and down. To me, this is a lot faster than riding the audio levels just because of the fact, like I said, I can see the waveform, see where it's a little louder, see where it's not, and be able to work with that very, very quickly. To get back to the default here, I can just right-click and say delete all, and it will take everything right back to where it was before. The third way of kind of riding the audio levels or working with the audio levels in this project that we're doing here is by using the audio filters. So if I have an audio filter here and I'm going to bring down my graphic equalizer and I bring that down just by placing it right there on the track that I want it to be on and notice that it shows up in my information window, I can double click on it and then very easily I can sit there and say, hey, I want to bring this down to negative 12. Select OK. Once again, play it. And now it's negative 12 underneath what it was. Now, this could be rather tedious if I had to do this over and over and over again. However, if you'll watch what I do over here in the information window, I'm just going to right-click on this graphic equalizer, go down and say Save as Current User Preset. Now, I want you to notice that up here in my audio filters, I now have a graphic equalizer called 1 with a yellow U, meaning that is a user preset. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to rename this to negative 12 dB. Now that I have that negative 12 dB up here in the audio filters, I can now pull this down to several clips if I want to. And I'll just give you an example. Let's say I select these four clips right here. I can pull this down on top of it. And now, as I select those, you'll see that each and every one of them now have the graphic equalizer on it and is now at negative 12 dB. So I can create a negative 3, a negative 6, a negative 12. In other words, I can continue to create these presets to where very quickly I can just go up to my audio filters and pull down and be able to place them on there very quickly, affecting the clips. So basically the three different ways that I would work with audio inside of this is, is one, the audio mixer, two, working with the rubber bands, or three, creating presets inside the audio filters and then using them as necessary.